Hello, this is Tony Heller from Visitech.ai. This is another very short video showing how you can quickly get accurate data about climate. I asked Perplexity.ai, are 95 degree days becoming more common in Indiana? For reference, 95 degrees Fahrenheit is 35 degrees Celsius. Perplexity answered, Yes, 95 degree days are becoming more common in Indiana and are projected to increase significantly in the future. Traditional AI sources scan the internet for articles like this one from the New York Times. The New York Times shows and predicts a large increase in the number of hot afternoons in Indiana. The New York Times article is referring specifically to 90 degree days rather than 95 degree days but the pattern is pretty much identical. However, NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information show a sharp decrease in the number of hot afternoons in Indiana. The problem that traditional AI has is that it trusts journalists rather than looking at actual data. So let's look at the actual data by going to my website, app.visitech.ai. This is what the website looks like for subscribers. I'm going to issue a command by clicking on the scroll wheel of the mouse, speaking into the microphone, and then clicking the scroll wheel one more time when I'm done talking. All days over 95 degrees in Indiana. Now we're looking at all 26,866 daily maximum temperatures over 95 degrees recorded in Indiana in the United States Historical Climatology Network. The left side of the graph is 1890 and it goes right through the current year. You can see that there used to be a lot more 95 degree days in Indiana and that the hottest days were much hotter. For example, on July 14, 1936, it was 114 degrees at Shoals, Indiana. Note that the actual data looks essentially identical to the NOAA graph of 95 degree days for Indiana. It used to be much hotter there. The reason why perplexity.ai was wrong is because it relies on unreliable sources like the New York Times. But at Visitech.ai, we work with actual data. I'm going to show you a few more features of Visitech before I finish up this video. First, I want to make the points larger on this graph. Point size 2. Now you can see very clearly Indiana's hot past. I'm going to click on Indiana's hottest day and see where it is on the map. The hottest temperature in Indiana occurred at Shoals, which is now shown in red on the Google map. Let's take a closer look at that station by issuing the command map map. You can see that the thermometer at Shoals is located in a nice rural location and we can take a closer look at it with Google Street View. And we can use the mouse to look around the neighborhood. Let's look at a different state now. All days over 95 degrees in Missouri. You can see the same pattern as Indiana. Missouri summer afternoons used to be a lot hotter. The hottest temperature in Indiana was 118 degrees on July 18, 1936. Let's click on that to see where it is on the map. You can see now that Lamar, Missouri is marked in red and it's over on the western side of the state. Let's look at all of the hot days in Stephenville by clicking on it. Now the red line on the graph shows temperatures in Stephenville. Let's click on Carothersville. Now Carothersville is shown in red. Let's click on a few other locations. Lebanon, Lamar, Marble Hill. Let's zoom in now on this location. Map. We can take a look at the location of the thermometer in Appleton City by using Google Street View once again. We can drag around with the mouse to see what that neighborhood looks like. We can look at another station by going back to the graph. Map. 
In just a few minutes on app.visitech.ai, we learned a lot about the climate of Indiana and Missouri. But if we go to the New York Times website, they will show you that Missouri summer afternoons are getting much hotter. And then artificial intelligence picks up on the misinformation being printed by the New York Times and parrots it back to the people using it. If you want real analysis of climate data or any other type of data, go to app.visitech.ai. Our analytic AI uses actual data and doesn't rely on misinformation it finds on the internet. In this video, I've just shown you a very small subset of the features we have available in our app. We're adding new features all the time and want to bring the value of analytic AI to people all over the world.